so so now I'd like to now I'd like to go and uh, and uh, use statistics. So with that statistic, let's go back up to environment, and you'll notice in environment there's oh, excuse, me, excuse me to the population, and in the population there's a statistics tab. Okay, um, in the statistics tab you can define your own custom statistics. So let's, let's uh, define a statistic that says something like um, uh, count in poverty, something like that. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, count in poverty, okay? Okay. And uh, the number of people in poverty will be, well, what do you think, which of these do you think is most appropriate? Is it a count? Is it a sum? Is it an average, a minimum, or a maximum? It's a, okay, this is actually a count of people we're going to be putting here. So, um, so this is a count of people. So in, in this particular case, it's a, it's a count. Um, I've asked any logic to add median in. Um, and uh, this this is a request that I, I suspect will be fulfilled eventually. But to add a median median in, um, um, okay. So um, count in poverty. So we're going to count the number of individuals who are in poverty. And um, who knows what what's the poverty threshold uh, for the U.S. Does anyone know in terms of yearly income? Fourteen fourteen thousand something like that. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to express a condition here, okay, for this. And what this condition is going to be is it's going to specify for a given person who we're going to call for the purposes of this, suppose we have a reference to a person called item. You'll notice there's this little, always try to pay attention to these little light bulbs when they relate to the field you're in. It's telling you that you're going to be able to access a, a given person I have a reference to a given person by calling them item. And if you have this reference to a person called item, we're then going to give a condition by which to count this person towards our common property. So we need to give an expression that returns true or false. In other words, it's a so-called Boolean expression. It says whether to count this person or not. If it's true, we'll count them towards this, towards this statistic. Otherwise, we won't count. So what would suppose we consider the threshold to be fourteen thousand dollars? Okay. Um, so below fourteen thousand dollars, we'll consider them in poverty. Above or equal to that, we'll consider them not in poverty. Could anyone tell me if item is a reference to a person? Could someone give me an expression that that will evaluate to true if they're below fourteen thousand dollars and false otherwise? What should I type? So, well, someone who's not a Java <laughs> programmer, <laughs> please. What expression would I write? So, I have a reference to a person. Item.income. This is a great start. Item.income. Yep. Yeah. Because that's the name that it gives us. Um, so it basically tells us, and this is very common in any logic, with this this little um, light bulb, um, uh, that it's basically telling us you have this way of referring to some important piece of information. In this case, it's saying item is so-called the embedded object. In other words, it's the person within the population. That's how you can refer to it. This condition is going to depend on what we're doing here is we're counting the number of elements of that population, number of you know, persons within that population that match some condition, that match some specification. I'll get to you in a second. And um, uh, here we, we need to specify some condition that if, if they satisfy that condition, we'll count them, otherwise we won't. That's what we're specifying here in this count. So the condition that we'll specify for a given person called, in this case, item, um, whether or not they count. If they, what our expression is is true, they'll count. If we're being in poverty, otherwise they, they won't. So 
Scott? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dr. Borschev is on record as this is the worst possible way you can do this. Not not saying this is how you we can't do this another way. He hates the syntax you have to use for suppression. Absolutely hates it. And he's actively working on changing the code base so that something a lot more intuitive is what you write here to get this system. Right. Right. It, it's, yeah. it's, it happens to be how they name it so that you can refer to whatever, when you're writing this condition, you can refer to the, the, the thing that's up, up for determination, you know, that in this case it's a person. Is this person to be counted or not? And this is a reference to that person. So, so that's the thing that against which you're applying this criteria. So here, item dog income is to start. If we want this to be true, if they're less, that uh, have a, an income below $14,000, what would you write then? Okay, yeah, so, so what would I write? Would I write plus, would I write divided, would I write less than 14,000? That's what I'd write, okay? So that, that is the criteria that we would use to determine if someone is in poverty. So in other words, this criteria, it's true, if it's true, we're counting them as being in poverty, but false, we're counting them as being not in poverty. And we're counting up the number of people who are in this group, in other words, the number in poverty. Does that make sense? Okay, so so ladies and gentlemen, um, let's uh, let's run this now, okay? So, so run this simple experiment. And what you'll see is here, that if you go click on the population, you'll see that there's a count in poverty. Do you see that? So TAs, who needs a TA? The TAs are ready for deployment, rapid deployment force. Okay, see it says count in poverty here, and it reports the number that satisfy that condition counting up each successive person that satisfies that condition. So at a mechanical level, what's going on, and it's actually rather important for performance reasons, you realize this is very mechanical. For each such statistic, it's going through and evaluating each person in the population terms. Like, do they match this criteria? If so, you know, tick it up by one. Um, you know, uh, does the first person match this criteria? Yep. Um, does the, does the first person match this criteria? Yep. Does the second person? Nope. Does the third person? Yep. Does the fourth person? Nope. Does the fifth person? Nope. Does the sixth person? Yep. Does the seventh person? Yep. Does the eighth? Yes. Does the ninth? No. Does the tenth? Yes. And it's just counting up one after the other, counting up the number that matches this criteria. One after other after other in, in sort of simple procession. And it doesn't to the, to, you know, up to the number of people in the population as a whole. Yes. Yes. It would. It would. Um, heck, um, there was a question earlier. If income changes over, you know, can you change a parameter value? In fact, maybe been from you. Uh, uh, even so, can you change parameter values over time? Yeah. Um, uh, absolutely. Um, and, and this would actually pick that up very readily. Um, uh, you know, we, we could show that it would probably involve an event and having them, you know, bumping their income around. Uh, I don't think I'll do it, but yes, absolutely it will. Okay, it'll keep that, keep that updated. Um, but we'll see that in the next one. Yes, question. It. Let us do that. Um, this is good rehearsal. So where would that parameter live? Is it a parameter in person? Or is it a par parameter in the population? Well, that's a little bit of a philosophical issue. Um, for simplicity here, um, it will be much easier if I describe it here as a parameter of the population. At a technical level, what I really wish any logic would support is static parameters for, for, for person, since it's conceptually associated with personhood. 
um, they should really they should really have a way of sort of having a characteristic that's essentially a static variable for the for for personhood. That's the better way to do it from a software engineering standpoint. But I'm going to have a parameter called um, poverty line. Okay, poverty line. That's a parameter for main. Okay, it applies across the population. It's a threshold that applies across the population, not varying on a per population basis. So we'll put it in in main. Um, bearing in mind that there are certain uh, subtleties which I'm not that I'm not um, observing here. So poverty line subtleties in terms of where it really should live. If if I had the perfect world and um, um, and you know, any logic would, would do it appropriately. So there's a poverty line. Okay, so uh, thinking of Gerhardt's request earlier, would this be an int or a double? Well, if, if we're keeping track of incomes at the level of ints, this should probably be a int also, okay? Um, now, where would this be specified? Part of the experiment. Um, so we could put a default expression. So if the experiment didn't specify something, we'll have a default expression. Sure, we'll do that here. I'll put 14,000. Now watch this, folks. And this will illustrate Edgar's question as well. Let's go to simple experiment. Go to the experiment, and per, you can see parameters. And now it's filled in this 14,000 here, OK? Um, so uh, this 14,000 is something which, um, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, specified on a per experiment basis. We could change it to be 20,000, and that default wouldn't matter at all after we changed it for this particular experiment. But, but we'll, we'll leave it uh, current. And so now we have main where, where this poverty line is set as a uh, parameter, but we could have we could have a, um, a different experiment which has a different poverty line. And more to the point, this poverty line could actually be changing over time in response to, uh, in response to sort of uh, policies. And this is just too, big an op too good an opportunity to miss, folks. So I'm going to, uh, to weave in something from a, a later lecture this morning, which I feel you have to know about. We are going to modify this during the model operation interactively. We will allow for playing with this parameter value while the model is running. While the model is running, we're going to be adjusting it. We're going to actually put in something we saw in a previous model, briefly, a slider. Where would that slider live? If we want to adjust this poverty line, which is a parameter of name, where do we put that slider? We want to adjust it while the model is running. Okay. If we wanted to adjust it before the model starts off, that's the experiment sort of uh, interface where that button that says like run the model. You put the slider there if you want to adjust it before the model runs. If you want to adjust it while the model is running, it needs to actually to live in main because it's main that's showing while the model is running. So ladies and gentlemen, let us do that. So double click on main here, and we'll put in a slider too, okay? Um, so we'll put in, a, put in a, a slider, and we will hitch up that slider to, we'll link it here, link it in to the poverty line, Ooh, poverty line, the, the poverty line parameter. It's linked to it. What do I mean by linked? Can anyone tell me? What do you think I mean by linked? That the, the, the slide is linked to it. Control is affecting the value. And in fact, if this poverty line changes over time because it's assigned to by something, and something in the model adjusts it as a maybe as a system dynamics model simulation. So I'd like to 
try running this thing now. So let's try running the simulation experiment, the simple experiment. And this addresses your question as well because it lets you, it lets you say, okay, oh, sorry folks, I, I did something silly. Excuse my, excuse my carelessness. Click, if, if you click, it, stop it and, and go back to the slider. You need to set a minimum and maximum value. Sorry, I was, I was heedless there. So go set a minimum value of, of, of zero, I would say a maximum value of 50,000, something like that. This will be changing our classification limit for poverty, okay? Okay, um, so, so here we're, uh, we're, we're setting this, this slider for, for poverty and, and you'll notice it's set right now at 14, uh, 14,000, if I adjust it, you'll notice it'll adjust the poverty line. You see that? Do, do people see that? If I'm moving it around? Now, now to, to address the question earlier, why don't I click, the, uh, click this population here, and you'll notice as I, uh, ooh, look at that, if I, okay. So I gotta have to open it and close it, uh, it looks like. Uh, okay, poverty line, ooh, excuse me, I haven't, sorry, I didn't change the statistic yet. Okay, so now we have a way of adjusting the poverty line, but we actually haven't made the statistic depend on the poverty line yet, all right? So, so I can adjust this around, it changes this parameter called poverty line, that's all well and good, but we need to make the statistic depend on the poverty line. And right now, that statistic is still hard-coded $14,000. So what would I need to do to make it depend on the poverty line parameter? Instead of 14,000. Okay, so let's make it depend on poverty line, right? Okay, so, so I want to run it. By the way, this whole process of changing just one or two things, running the model again, making sure it works, making sure it so called builds fine, making sure that it runs okay, it's a key process. It's not, it's not only sort of uh, motivating for morale. But it's also something that's um, uh, that's very helpful for quickly zeroing in. You'll notice as I move this around that it's actually updating the statistic count in poverty. Do you see that? So if I if I lower the poverty line, the count in poverty goes down. If I raise the poverty line, the count in poverty goes up. Do you see that? Do people see that? St who needs a TA? Who requires a TA? Two people need a TA. TAs deploy. <laughs> TAs deploy pretzels. Um, okay. Okay. Who who needs a TA here? Uh, and when ye deploy the pretzels. <laughs> oh, oh, those aren't. I guess those are sausages. Um, uh, so uh, so uh, here we have a we have a slider. The slider is linked to a parameter. This parameter is used to compute a statistic. Use a statistic that's computed here, and that statistic is reported by when we clicked on the population. So in short, folks, and I'd like you to pay attention to this in case you haven't observed it. You'll notice that right now at the default value, it says 4,400 people are in poverty. If I, if I drag this slider up, so I change the poverty threshold to be higher, it leads to more people being in poverty and it shows it immediately and I lower it. So this is an illustration of the fact that, that it, it is a dynamic display of the information it also further illustrates how you could, pursuant to Sarah's question, how you could, um, you could make the poverty threshold, instead of being hard-coded, parameter. And incidentally, that when I was going to put this down, my gut immediately said, make it a parameter. Make it a parameter, I thought, okay, you know, simple logical slides. But it's a good thing that it's a parameter. It makes it more flexible. It makes it clearer. If it's, you don't have 14,000 in several places, you only have it in one place. It makes it transparent because you see it explicitly as something that's considered. So in general, it's a good thing to make it a parameter or, or uh, at the least.
least a variable. Um, so, so here we do have this parameter. It's been parameterized. But the most important thing that I wanted to emphasize for you right now was this, was this statistic. Okay, So we could have a statistic um, which, um, which is used uh, to, to count up the number. And, it, and we, we do.